Finding out you're pregnant is a life-changing moment for anyone, especially if you're a man. I am about to try and take a pregnancy test and we'll see what happens. We need to leave now. <laughs> What's going on there? Baby's going on in there. This is the story of an extraordinary couple. I love you. Pushing themselves to extraordinary limits. <sighs> oh, there's that belly. You're having a contraction right now. In the ordinary endeavor to raise a family. Who's this little one? This is my son. Look, say hi, Miles. You did it, baby. I don't think it's uh, natural. I'm sorry, I'm seething. Pissed off the wrong trainers this time. <laughs> God created women to be women and men to be men. Anyone that thinks that we are different or strange can go jump off a cliff for all I care. I'm not going to let one person's opinion of me destroy my family. Tom and Scott Moore have been married for three years. Despite appearances, they were both born as girls. Growing up, I was 100% girl. My mom had me wear my hair down. It was down past my waist. You know, she tried really hard, you know, a little strawberry shortcake, everything. But in the inside, I always knew that I was different. I was always kind of the awkward kid. When I was a lot younger, I didn't really even pay attention to gender or, you know, whether I was playing with little boys or little girls. I just kind of thought of everybody as humans. Jessica! No! And probably when I hit puberty was when I realized something was really wrong. Jessica and Laura each came from traditional families. Then Jessica became Scott and Laura became Tom. Scott and Tom, who are now gay men, even though they used to be confused women, met at the local lesbian, gay, bi, transgender group and fell in love. Scott never had a full sex change, but Tom did. So in the eyes of the law, Scott, who used to be Jessica, was still a woman, but Tom, who used to be Laura, was now a man, which meant Scott and Tom could get married. Tom already had two adopted sons, Greg and Logan, so they were now a family, along with two dogs, two cats, a turtle and a pufferfish. 13-year-old Greg has a form of autism called Asperger's syndrome. Oh, I have really good balance. Yeah, one minute. I'm going to drink this milk and then show you. <laughs> Eleven-year-old Logan has just started middle school. Uh, what's not normal about my family is that I have two dads. Kind of makes it weird to, you know, go to school and stuff. Would you say that you have an unusual family? Hmm. Nah. Maybe a little. Maybe just a little bit. Tom adopted Greg and Logan after a relationship with their mother, a troubled transsexual with severe psychoses. Tragically, in 2009, she took her own life. After such a traumatic experience, Tom couldn't bear to see them taken into care. They were going to tear them apart. They were going to put Greg in a, an adult-like facility. Greg would never get any help, and he would just rot. And then he would never see Logan again. And I knew, ultimately, that that was the worst possible solution for them. And Greg didn't call me dad for about a year, because there had been so many people in and out of the parents' life that 
he just could not get that connection. And I'll never forget the day he called me dad. It just, I cried. I was just like, I was so happy. I was just like, are you sure you want to call me that? And he goes, you're my dad. The Moors were blissfully happy as a family of four. But like most married couples, Scott and Tom still wanted to try for a baby. Unlike most male gay couples, they had the means to do so. What's going on there? A baby's going on in there. He's about to come out soon, hopefully. At first, when he suggested having a baby and me carrying it, I didn't even think about it. I automatically just said, no, no way. And that's because I always just told myself I can't have kids. Get out. But as we started talking about it more, it became a really quick decision and I was ready to do it. Scott still has a healthy female reproductive system. Biologically, getting pregnant is no different. They just needed a sperm donor. Often, the biggest difficulty faced by a pregnant man is other people's judgment. But in their hometown of Weed, Scott and Tom feel safe, surrounded by friends who accept them. Oh, those are cute. It's a whale. Wow. <laughs> Look at that! How cute! Male pregnancy is a rare phenomenon, and most transgender men who have babies choose to do so in secret. When I got pregnant, I really didn't want anybody to know. I wanted to pretend that I was just a guy with a big beer belly and um, hide it from the world. And as I progressed, I just kind of came to terms with it, and I'm like, why do I want to hide it? I want to show the world that I'm proud. <laughs> Time to come out! Ding dong, come out and play! <laughs> it's three weeks before Scott's due date. Dad and I are going to go and have a baby. They've discovered his mucus plug is leaking and he's losing amniotic fluid. Oh, this is scary. He needs to be induced immediately. Oh, there's that belly. So how are you doing? Okay. This is this fun apparatus they put on you when you're expecting. And the bottom one is registering the baby's heartbeat. But the baby's doing fine. And the top one the is the... The stress test came out great. Mm. You're so handsome. I like to see you smile. You're having a contraction right now. I'm not feeling it. You can see, check it out. Contractions. Here's a good one. Right here. Boom. Boom. So things are moving along. How are you feeling? Um, all right. All the months that we were trying, I never thought this was going to happen, and now the next time we go home, we're going to have an extra little person in tow. Yep. Can't believe it. After an epidural and a whole night of labor, baby Miles was born on the 9th of March 2010, weighing 8 pounds and 5 ounces. Here he is. Look at him. Oh. Here he is. Oh, he's camera shy. You did it, baby. How do you feel? I'm so happy. How are you, Daddy? Oh, I'm good, huh? Who's this little one? This is my son. Look, say hi, Miles. Say hi. I'm the contentest baby in the universe. Just in the theory. I think he's feeling fantastic. Whoa! That's a money shot. 
I, I really do think that I was lucky to uh, be able to carry miles. I think for the longest time my body um, and being transgendered was such a negative thing for me and made me so uncomfortable and even though the process of being pregnant and giving birth isn't the most comfortable thing, it made me appreciate what I have more and um, realize that even though it's not the ideal of what I would like to be, that it's still beautiful and um, has made me a lot more happier with who I am. Greg and Miles' first meeting. He's my little brother. He's my little brother. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. He's adorable, and he's the best, and he's the most awesome thing since sliced pizza. I am so happy to be home. But as they settle into their new life as a family of five, the Moors are unaware that they're heading for a crisis that will change everything. You did it, baby. The birth of baby Miles has hit the news and attracted some scornful opinions. How can you not like Star Wars? In their small hometown in California, Scott and Tom Moore feel safe from harm. But on the 3rd of May, 2010, the family became the victims of a freak accident. I'm watching TV, not caring, a real care in the world. Then my dad and dad too started saying there was a fire to get out. I mean, if they didn't say that, I would have sat there and not noticed the fire at all. The fire destroyed their home. It was really scary and I was Trying not to breathe, having my shirt over my mouth, but I ended up like getting a little bit of smoke into my lungs. And I was coughing and it hurt for about a couple hours. Arson was quickly ruled out, but with no insurance, the disaster left them destitute. They resigned from their jobs, packed up what was left of their possessions, and drove their family a thousand miles south to set up home in New Mexico, near Scott's family. No. It's not true. You're kidding me, stinky. Bobby is ready. Oh, yeah. Four months later, the Moors are still trying to find their feet in their new, less comfortable surroundings. I guess it would be one of those neighborhoods where no one knows each other, I guess. Unlike back in California where everyone knew everyone. I'm pretty much stuck in the hottest place I've ever been in. And Greg is not happy here because he's so far away from his friends and his girlfriend. <laughs> it's not a bad place, it's just that there's a better, the, the, play, the home is better. Home? California. A sprawling Bible Belt city on the border of Texas, Las Cruces wouldn't be the first place a gay transgender couple would choose to settle. As a family, we're not in an ideal place right now. We're not where we want to be. Tom doesn't like New Mexico. I don't like New Mexico. I think for the most part, we all just really miss our friends. We miss our grass, we miss our lawn, and we miss everything about home. Scott's working night shifts as a carer while studying for a psychology degree. 
Tom's taken a job as a satellite TV technician. I thought going from a, a small town to a bigger town would help find acceptance and understanding of our family, but we haven't really found it that much acceptance here. <laughs> No hitting me in the head, Gregory. I was just getting you off of me. <laughs> Do you think it's more difficult for a family like yours to move house and fit into a new place? Oh, yeah. I mean, most of our neighbors think Scott and I are brothers. Absolutely, 110%. And neither of us have set them straight. I can't even fire this thing. Okay, there's a great gator in the car you can have. Awesome. Thank you so much for these gifts, which we are about to receive to your bag and press up a lot. Amen. Now can you slow down and do it right? Thank you all Lord for these I gifts, so which we are about to receive to the bounty of Christ. Our Lord, amen. Thank you. Moving back to California <laughs> is a long-term goal, but it's one that we're going to have to be very strategic about. We can't just be like, we're sick of it here, let's pack up our, up our stuff and go. <coughs> Scott's mom's here, and Scott's dad is here, and I mean, although the people that we love back home are not here, family is important to us. Any break in routine can be especially traumatic for someone with Asperger's. This is Hadi. I got him, got him from Justine, my girlfriend in California. This is, this is Woods. I got her in California, and Spot and Woods are boyfriend and girlfriend. Put them out again. Woods, Spot. Spot's the one with Spots. Love you all the same. Greg and Logan have been settling in to their new, much larger school. Jimmy, don't touch this. Gregory, no. You could do an entire thing if you touched it. So far, no one at their school knows about their unusual family situation. For Scott, being a pregnant man in their small hometown was relatively easy. Here, they feel the need to be more secretive about where baby Miles came from. But the Moors have just made a big decision which they won't be able to hide. So we would walk the, the trails out behind Scott's mom's house and he just popped off with, I really think I want to have another one. And I remember I had to sit down, I was like, what? <laughs> because from the very beginning, he was like, I will have one, one only, and then I'm done, three is enough. Choosing the right time to try for a new baby is always tricky, but for a transgender man, timing is everything. I mean, honestly, uh -huh. I would say if you were a biological woman, then I would say, let's wait a year. Uh -huh. Let's let Miles get a little bit more mature before we make another one. But I don't want you off your hormones forever. Yeah. Because it is affecting you know you as a person and your emotions and your physical needs. So in that case, I would just prefer to get it done. Do you think it's going to bring on any more negative press or prejudice? Or... Oh, most definitely. Um, it wasn't really our choice that it got out. You know, the, the story wasn't something that we were looking for, but once it did happen, we knew that to some extent we were going to have some negative feedback from people. You know, if I went around every day my whole life doing only what I thought everybody would agree with, I'd be the most miserable human being in the universe. <laughs> It's the morning of Thanksgiving at Scott's mum's house. The Moore family are trying their best to forget the stresses of their life in New Mexico. I think that anyone that thinks that we are different or strange can go jump off a cliff for all I care. I mean, I know it might be hard for people to believe, but just because I'm transgender and just because I'm gay and just because I've had a baby, that's not constantly all I think about. I don't think about how different I am.
too much of our time in life is focused on negative things. Um, and I think that when you focus on the negative, you're giving the negative the power. Because it's these memories the kids will hold with them forever. You mix the this and the that and the this and the that and the that and the that and the that. Come on, be Being transgendered can put enormous pressure on family relationships. Although Scott's parents are separated, his dad has popped in briefly to say hello before dinner. My dad is kind of like, um, it's just like an awkward communication gap there, I guess. Hi. I'm healed. Yeah, let's go to work tonight. I'm healed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you put it up in the Scott thinks of himself as a man and wants to live as a man. I'm totally willing to, to address him as Scott, even though it's difficult to say that. It'd be a whole lot easier if he changed the name to Jesse than to something totally different. So that was hard to get to call him a totally different name. But I'm more of a realist is you still got all the organs and functioning parts of a, a female. So he lives as a man, but still biologically as a female. That's the way I, I kind of see him. Yeah, yeah. Come here. Hi there. Oh, you smell so good. Scott's mum has fully embraced his transition, but it wasn't easy. I, I did a lot of soul searching on this. So and now I'm just revisiting it, but um, I feel like I went through like the, I don't know how many stages there are of grief, like if someone dies, because she was an adorable, adorable little girl. Oh. Don't cry. You always make me cry when you cry. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't talked about that in a long time. Yeah. As a mother of teenagers, you talk with other moms and they brag about how well their kids are doing. And it's like, how do you say, you know, well, my son is actually, my daughter is actually my son. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, I want Scott to be happy. Tom's family weren't so accepting of his sex change. This year has been particularly tough for him since he recently lost his mother. It's just really hard because my mom spent so much time fighting me becoming myself that we lost so much time just being together and being close. So when she finally, her and I finally were able to get beyond the fact that I was no longer the daughter and I was now the son, there wasn't enough time. I love you. I love you too. I think it's cool though. Scott's got a family that really supports him. And that's the other thing that's kind of hard being around your mom and your dad is like, you don't always get along with your dad, but your dad loves you whether you're gay or straight or trans or pregnant men or... Yeah. He doesn't care. It's just like, you're my kid and I love you and I'll do what I can to help you however I can. And my dad doesn't even like recognize that I exist anymore. Yeah. It's already a struggle for the Moors to be living in a less friendly environment, but they're soon to see what happens when the truth about their family comes out. After having a baby in Northern California, transgender couple Scott and Tom Moore are now about to try for another one in Bible Belt, New Mexico. They've even found a local midwife who specializes in female to male transsexuals. Tom has a surgically constructed penis, so they need to find a sperm donor. Scott still has a vagina and working female reproductive system, so the rest is quite straightforward. Hi, How are you? Oh, Cammy knows all the tricks for maximizing the chances of conception through artificial insemination. What we do is we put the sperm inside it goes right in here, this goes inside, and then it sits, it, it's almost like a suction cup, and it 
sits up against the uterus. So the cervix would be centrally located, mm -hmm. and then this would be suctioned up against the uterus. Mm -hmm. So our agenda here is to keep the sperm as close to the cervix and as much in place as possible to increase the chances and opportunities for conception. <laughs> Cami is well versed in the minefield of problems faced by men who are trying to get pregnant. The last thing I can imagine a trans man having a baby would have to endure is somebody referring to him with female pronouns and female body parts as though he wasn't man at all. Like I remember when you had asked me you know, what do you prefer your bits to be called? And I had never, ever been asked that question ever before. In terms of talking about a pregnancy, I can handle the word ovary or like, you know, uterus, because it's really just I tend medical. to put pronouns in front of them. Like I'll put, you know, your man ovaries or, <laughs> yeah. you know, your man hold down here. Yeah. I actually get a lot of referrals based on the idea of sensitivity. It really, I'm not doing anything different for them really than I'm doing for anybody else except my language. It'll now be two weeks before Scott can know for sure whether their efforts have been successful. Because you didn't tell me to go first last week. I you didn't tell me anything. Most transgender men take testosterone once a week. I've been taking testosterone for 10 years, so since 2000. So I just go for the meaty part here. Is that hurting right now? Mm, you get used to it, I think. You just put that whole needle right in your arm? Mm-hmm. In order to conceive, Scott has to stop taking male hormones. It means that the pressure is on to get pregnant. Going so long without testosterone is already causing his beard to grow thinner and his voice to get higher. What was really difficult for me was because I had the female puberty when I was a teenager. Then I went on hormones, I had a second puberty. Um, then I came off the hormones, had another puberty, and then I got pregnant and had all the pregnancy hormones. So my body was just, you know, I was a roller coaster ride. There we go. Okay. So would you say being transgender makes sex difficult? Being transgender doesn't make sex difficult for me because at this point, because I'm married, I'm in love with my partner and my partner understands me. Tom opted for surgery to turn his clitoris into a penis. They built something around it so it actually, the way that you get sexual sensation is from the, the tissue, the new tissue that's built on rubbing and bumping up against the clitoris. For Scott and Tom, having a sex change has nothing to do with sexual preference. Your sexuality is who you are attracted to, and your gender is who you are. And those are two completely different things. I wasn't really looking for a partner, per se, of any gender or orientation. I was looking for a soulmate, someone that fit me. For many transgender men, the most distressing part of having a woman's body is their breasts. Because I just didn't want to see them. Like, to see them would make me cry. The process of binding is incredibly toxic. It got to the point where I would caused gangrene. And so when I finally did have to have my breasts removed, it was a massive mastectomy. I lost my nipples. I wasn't able to have those rebuilt. But it, in the same extent, it saved my life. Scott had his mastectomy at 18, so breastfeeding could never be an option. 
Do you think that I'm pregnant? Oh, don't do this. Do you think I am? I don't know. Do you think you are? I don't want to get my hopes up. But I think I am. <laughs> I think I'm just really afraid to get my hopes up because it's like, what are the what are the possibilities that the first try nailed the job, you know? It's like my baby, my, my little wifey here is a fertile myrtle. Your wifey. Your wifey. I'm kidding. He's my husband doodle. <laughs> the Moore's attempts for another baby must fit in with everything else a normal family of five has to cope with. You guys really need to clean your room. What happened? Thirteen-year-old Greg needs extra special attention because of his Asperger's, so they're careful to make sure Logan doesn't feel left out. When he starts acting a little low, then I get concerned, so a little one-on-one -on -one time, even if it's just running errands, makes a huge difference. I think it is hard because Greg does have special needs, and so even at school, he's got more one-on-one -on -one care and after-school care. Hello. I love you. Today, Tom's taking Logan to the barber. Let's go get our hair cut. What kind of haircut are you going to get, Logan? I don't know. Whatever Dad makes him get. Yeah. Very short? No. I'm OK with you keeping some length on the top and the front, but I want that stuff off the back of your head. Explaining their family circumstances to strangers is something most transgender parents find difficult. So do you think boys should have short hair? Oh, yeah. It's like one of those things, you know, boys have short hair, girls have long hair. I just don't get the whole long hair on a guy thing. Look at you, look at so good. Compared to their hometown of Weed, Las Cruces, New Mexico, wouldn't be described as liberal. First to date, I gotta make sure it's okay with my pastor and go on. Um, once he gives me the okay, then I go talk to her, her, um, her pastor and her dad, make sure it's all right. and then. That's when we get the okay to start dating, but... So what religion is that? Uh, we're a Christian, non-denomination. Mm -hmm. It's called um, Cedar Hills Tabernacle. Oh, I've been by there. Oh, really? Yeah, you all are welcome. Any time to go visit. Looks good. Good. Yeah. Tom knows that people here may not be as accepting as their friends back home. Where do you want to go? I'm not so for or against homosexuality. The way, the way I believe is God's not mad at the, at the people that are. He's mad at the fact there is homosexuality. Sweet. <clears throat> so you think it's not a good thing? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's a good thing at all. I mean, it's, it's horrible to see, especially like in public or around young, young kids. I mean, it's a bad, bad, um, influence on him, so. What would you say if, if I said that Tom, whose hair you just cut, he, he's mm. a, a gay parent, that child has two gay dads? Mm. I'm, you know, willing to, you know, work with them and whatever, as long as, you know, no crazy thing goes on, but, you know. And, I, and also the other thing is they're transgender, so they used to be women, so Tom used to be a woman. Really? I would have never guessed that part. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know what to say to that part, but, no, nah, I mean, hey, that's his business, and, you know, it's not the way it's supposed to be, you know, of course, but can't really do nothing about it now. He's so, so far into it, so, you know, it's a man's decision that he made, the woman, whatever, <laughs> whatever he is, <laughs> his decision, so, I mean, you know, may God be with him, I say. It seems the barber's church isn't the only one in Las Cruces to hold such views. I would advise them, if they came to us before having a child, I would advise them not to. I would say there's things in their life that need to change, that need to be brought within the conformity of Scripture. God created women to be women and men to be men, so based on Christian values, it's not the right thing to do. I think it's not God's choice 
No, it should be the church's choice. However, that's better than having that child on the street, nobody taking care of it. That type of decision that someone would make would be on par with uh, adultery or lying or any other sin. Like most transsexuals, Scott and Tom would argue that their transition from one gender to another was unavoidable. Yes, I choose to be harassed. I choose to be called names. I choose to be different. You know, no, you don't make a choice. It's simply who you are. And it's, it's not an easy life. I've stopped trying to figure out what people think, you know? It's, if you spent, I mean, and it doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, bi, white, black, purple. If you spent your time trying to figure out what people think or worrying about what people think, you'd go crazy. You'd go absolutely crazy. The following day, there's an unexpected phone call from Greg and Logan's school. In a special needs session, Greg innocently mentioned for the first time that one of his two dads had given birth. Come here. You're angry with me, I know. I know. The teacher assumed that on top of his Asperger's, Greg was delusional and suggested to Tom he may not be right for the school. Tom said it led to an argument. I'm sorry, I'm seething. I've never seen you drinking a beer before, Tom. I try not to. Just in a very really bad mood today. He needs to relax. In the confusion that followed, Tom believed that both boys had been removed from the school. The school understood it was Tom who asked for his sons to be removed. You need to remember it's not your fault, okay? <laughs> no, it's not your fault. I want to go to school tomorrow. I want to be with my friends and my teachers. How do you go from him being a wonderful student and everybody loves him to he's not a fit for the school? Because you find out some extra details. You know, it's not us that's the problem, it's the people that don't understand us. They didn't say anything to Logan or Greg. We had to let them know that today was their last day of school and they didn't get a chance to say goodbye to anybody or to have any knowledge of what was going on at all until they got home. Hey, Greg. Everything's gonna be okay, okay? We're gonna work it out. And it'll be better in the end, because you know, if the school feels that way, it means they're not very nice. Yeah, we don't want you going there at that level. The teacher is very nice. Yeah, you have some nice teachers. <laughs> it's okay to miss them. And it's okay to cry, too. Still under the impression that it was the school who excluded the boys, the Moors are insisting on seeking legal advice. It pissed off the wrong trainings this time. Yeah. You need to find an attorney now. now. Everyone says, I'll call you back in a few days. I tried a lot of people. How long can we move out of here? Out of where? This house, the, the city preferably, the entire state would be fine. We cannot run away from a place every time we have a problem. We have to stand up and fight because, Logan, if this has happened to you and Greg, it's going to happen to somebody else, right? Yeah. Just take a deep breath, go for a walk if you need to, do what you need to do to take care of you a little bit. You know, let the adults handle the adult stuff because this is adult stuff. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now what? Scott and Tom Moore are still reeling from a dispute at Greg and Logan's school. I'm tired. Having been up every night with the teething baby, Tom is reaching the end of his tether. What am I being in the middle? What's there?
in an attempt to get away from it all, they're taking the kids on a family day out to the desert. Hey, Greg, go get my Zoom, would you? Wow. I seek out isolated areas where we don't have to be around people. Because then we don't have to be, we don't have to pretend we're not something we are. <sighs> Food, before we go to your mother's. Okay, but it's already 2 o'clock. Never mind, I'll just go to the store and grab stuff for sandwiches. I don't care. No, it's fine, I'm telling you. The I'm stressful not. situation is proving inescapable. You guys, you know what? I'll walk. I don't care. I'm so done with your drama today. I never can do anything. It's always got to be drama. Come stop for a minute, please. No, I'm not going to stop for a minute. I haven't slept in five days. Okay. Five days, Scott. Can you stop yelling at me? No, I'm just done with today with you. Okay, then be done. Later that day, Tom's beginning to realize the enormity of their decision to try for another baby in Las Cruces. This is not my idea of a day off. But he's had a nice trip out. Yeah, that's true, but Scott was just in a really bad mood, and the school proved all his fears correct. So it's hit Scott really badly. Yeah, sort of thing. it has, and now he's even more terrified just because he's like, what if I am pregnant, you know? And, He's definitely going through it right now. I don't know how to really make it better for him either. Although the school make it clear that they don't discriminate, Tom's not yet ready to accept this. I'm not gonna let one person's opinion of me destroy my family. It's nearly two weeks since Scott's insemination, and he's decided to take a pregnancy test. Chances are it's going to be negative, and that doesn't mean that I'm not, you know? It just means I did it too early and I wasn't patient enough. Why aren't you doing it with Tom? Because I want to surprise Tom. Last time when we took the test and it was positive, he was here, so we like, you know, but I kind of want to wait till he comes home and just be like, we need to talk, you know? Make him think he's in trouble, and then tell him. <laughs> we need to leave now. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Just to see if I'm crazy. Do you see an extremely, extremely faint line going down? Where's the light? <laughs> I think it's positive. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably like so faint because it's so early. But I think there's another line there. You saw it, right? Yeah? In spite of everything, Scott and Tom are still determined to extend their family. So I took a pregnancy test. Actually, I took three pregnancy tests today. And um, it's not for sure yet, but I might be pregnant. And if you look at it, because we did it, I did it so early, like really, 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 really early. But you could see like a really, really faint line. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. You can. So I'm not crazy. Yeah, you're not crazy. Okay. Wow. I still don't want to get my hopes up. What do you think? I think your dad's going to kill us. Yeah. It'll be worth it, though. But it's not for sure positive. It's most likely positive. Are you ready for this again? I know. It's like 
<laughs> we need a bigger car. Are you ready to be a pregnant man again? It's not about being a pregnant man. It's about like I don't wake up in the morning and I'm like I don't wake up in the morning and think, oh yeah, great day to be a pregnant man. You know, like it's just it's just life. You know, and it's not as exotic to me as it seems to other people, you know?